Uh, this week, we are joined by Marion Cole, who has been on one of the episodes. So, welcome, Marion. Thanks, Jake. Hey, Dave. Hey, Marion. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. So, we're trying a little something new this week, um, and maybe for the future. Marion is currently, she's part-time. She's on a bit of a trial. Um, yeah, she was already I, late, so that's like... <laughs> Uh, maybe it's not a trial. We'll, we'll see. But no contract has officially been signed yet. Um, pressure just but, went like to here. <laughs> the, the question, Jake, is: Is Marion elite, truly elite? Or oh, Marion's elite. We'll find out today. Yes, we'll from discussions out. I've had with Marion, she is definitely elite. Um, but moving on to this week's episode, uh, we are joined by Marion's former college roommate and teammate, uh, Gab- <laughs> Gabby Seiler. Gabby, welcome. It's a Hi. Of <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Once you're done with your MWSL career, hopefully you have get some national team caps, go all that different, <laughs> all that different stuff. Um, stay healthy, of course. Are you going to go back and play in the WNBA? <laughs> oh my God. Where are we going? <laughs> yes. Great question. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, was yes. gonna, I thought he was going to say, do you want to have me back on the podcast or something? <laughs> I literally was not expecting it to go that way at all. Like, <laughs> like I remember going, my like first week at Florida, like I saw girls getting to practice like an hour early and doing all these extra things. And I was like, Wait, is this normal? <laughs> you know, it's like, that was the standard. Like the standard was you get there an hour early to do extra stuff or you're staying after, you know? And yeah. I think, you know, that, I give that credit to Becky, like, she has kind of instilled that kind of culture, and so I think once I got into that environment at Florida, it was like, okay, I can do this, and if I really want to play pro, like, I have to put in the work now, and I think kind of like a, a what am I trying to say, oh, like a light switch, it you was, know, it was horrible. I was on crutches for nine weeks, non-weight bearing, I lived on the third floor of an apartment with no elevator. Um, I just noticed last night, Bethany Balser put out, um, cause the athletic had put out uh, like the year in sports for 2020 and Bethany put out a comment and it seemed to, you know, get good feedback. And I, I think it's an important issue. It's uh, like a few words describe how I feel about this pissed, underappreciated, tired. Congrats men for once again, being better and brighter than us. So it was like the biggest moments, the best and brightest. Oh yeah, I saw year. that. My coach also tweeted. Well, my former, my Portland coach also tweeted something about that. Even just in general, it, it doesn't have to be about the tweet, but I'm more, you know, it could be the tweet, but I'm more interested in just like the role of women's soccer. It's frustrating. <laughs> I, it's, it's exhausting, honestly. I just feel like if we got and half the coverage, that I think men's sports get like I just can't even imagine because I even look at the challenge cup and we weren't even on the main channel and like the viewership was up so much and so I'm like the only sport playing that yeah, like, and it wasn't even on the main CBS channel like granted and you had to pay a subscription or like even like the even like women's college soccer you have to pay like an extra six bucks to get ESPN plus or ACC net or whatever and it's like can you ima- like, and I just can't imagine if like ESPN actually like covered it or whoever, like if anybody just stepped up because they would realize that people are going to watch it. Like clearly people watched it and paid $5.99 to watch CBS All Access. 